Welcome back to another episode of Terraform. In this episode, we are going to implement Terraform Remote Backend. What is Backend? That's nothing but the location where your Terraform state file is located. By default, it is stored in your local file system where you are running Terraform. But what happens when your local file gets corrupted or maybe your local disk having some fault or problem? Terraform Remote Backend solves this problem. We can use any cloud bucket storage be it AWS, GCP, Azure, whatever, Terraform will automatically sync your state from bucket whenever any Terraform job is activated. So let's get started. You can go to github.com slash sdas92, that's my repo. You can go to GCP and this is Terraform episode 7, click on this. And here you have the module and projects code. I have already cloned this repository locally. Let me explain you what I am going to create. So I have created a module which is called bucket. So in this bucket, I am just creating cloud storage bucket in Google. So that's very simple. It is creating one resource and what is the required input for this name of that bucket and where it should be created. That's bucket location and what I'm giving as module output. That's my bucket name. And in repo, you will possibly see this projects folder where, where my project codes are located and it is calling the module. I have just copied, okay, I have not copied, I have created one folder called local project and let me copy all the Terraform files in this local project. I will just explain you how local state file works with Terraform and we will switch back to remote state file. Let me open PowerShell from here. So let me put Terraform in it as usual. Oh, if I can spell it right, Terraform in it. In my code, it is having the remote backend which needs authentication to use bucket. I'll explain how remote backend can be activated. But before that, let me just comment it out and I can run it locally. So I'm giving which provider I need. That's Google and I'm calling the module. I'm passing bucket name, bucket location and I am getting the module output which I've shown in a module folder, bucket folder. So I'm getting that output here. That's all. So I think this time Terraform minute should work. Yeah, that's fine. Let me clear my screen. So before running any job, I need the Google credential or where my JSON file is located. And this I've already explained in episode number four. You can check it out. I'll give one link in the description section as well. That's better. So let me now do Terraform plan. And before that, let me just change the bucket name, which I'm going to create instead of episode seven, giving local, you can give any name. It is going to create one bucket and let me put Terraform apply and before that let me go to ignore this bucket. So basically there is no bucket which is created from any Terraform or anything like that. It's asking for yes and it has successfully created it. Let me just check. Yeah, it's there and if I go to local project i can see one state file has been created let me head over to this one and if i open this if i head over to terraform.tf state it has created module.bucket and all the details related to it for example if i put terraform apply again and the state file is intact there is no change and there is no change in code as well you see there is no changes that's the beauty of terraform state file it checks whether there is any change on the code versus on the state file so for example what happens if i just remove this file that means my file is corrupted for now i've created one folder called archive I'll, let me just cut paste in this folder so in my root project directory there is no state file and if i put terraform apply again it will show you the plan again indeed it will show you that it is going to create one bucket for you because it doesn't know what is already created because my state file is missing if you put yes here and let us see what happens indeed as the bucket is already created and i have not deleted it google will just prompt you that you cannot create another bucket with the same name as obvious so what i can do now and if i bring back the state file again let me just copy it and if i put terraform apply again you see no changes so Terraform state file is one source of truth for Terraform. It checks everything in that file. And if there is any change, then only it is going to act upon. The better approach in modern DevOps technologies, you can use Terraform remote or I'll say Terraform remote backend. So let me just close this local for now. I can copy this folder local because it has already the plugins and everything. Paste it here. Let me just rename it to maybe remote. I'll just delete the state file and archive. This is not required. This was from old one. So dot terraform folder basically stores your plugins and everything. I need to change this one 
maybe go to common i need to uncomment this i'll explain this so basically terraform block is used for setting the terraform so you can specify where the, your backend should be if you have any required providers what should be the version and the location or source where it should come from and many other things you can check out you can google terraform if i put terraform block and you'll see this terraform settings you can open it up and you can read it for yourself and as you see there can be many other things so i have defined backend equals to gcs that means google storage it can be aws and it can be anything else also as well so i have defined one name so before using this i need to create one bucket so i can create it manually for example i need to create one bucket click on create on your google cloud console regional is fine for me I can get anything in Asia, maybe Delhi, which is capital of India. Continue and everything rest is fine with me and that's all great. Now my bucket is ready. It's here. So I can use that and prefix means the path where your state file will be stored in. So basically it's a directory structure. First directory will be Terraform. Second directory will be your state. Then inside that directory or folder, you will have default.tf state. We'll very soon see this. Now this bucket is empty. Nothing is there. Meanwhile, let me change this bucket name from local to maybe episode 7 and let me change the directory remote. These are the files there and as usual terraform init and I already had the authentication that means Google application credentials set. So it has already initialized and it has used the remote backend that's fine for now and let me check terraform plan so meanwhile terraform plan comes let's just see what terraform block looks like if i go to common.tf so this is your backend it can be anything aws s3 bucket or anything else and this is completely optional for this episode also just i wanted to show you in terraform blog you can have multiple other arguments or maybe settings if required so i need google provider i can specify it's the default hashicorp google provider and this is the version i need greater than equals to 4.20 so i think plan has come now so that's my bucket is going to be created terraform apply hyphen hyphen auto hyphen approve so this time i do not want the yes prompt i can directly create it and let me head back to my bucket lists it's creating now yeah it's done let me refresh here indeed this bucket is created now and if i go to the bucket which i have created you see terraform one directory has been created which is defined here and inside state folder will be there inside state default.tf state this is my tf state or state file for this one and if i go to this folder remote you see if i refresh there is no state file created locally and i can use this code anywhere for example if i push this code to github or maybe any source control and i can clone this repository and if i have proper service account and authentication ready i can use this remote backend anywhere and i can do changes on my infrastructure that's the beauty so let me do one thing let me open cloud cell my cloud cell is ready now I have run this Terraform locally using remote backend and it has stored everything in GCS bucket. I can use the same code maybe anywhere else. Maybe I can use cloud shell and I'll use the same backend. And if I do any changes over there, it will get reflected on my cloud. And let me upload this folder now. Terraform episode 7 is fine. Maybe I don't need these things. And maybe I need only this two folder remote and modules let me create cancel it let me create i have created one folder called terraform and maybe i'll upload the two folders which is module and the remote project only that should be fine let me upload the module first and let me upload the project as well which is remote yeah this one so let me open that folder tf for now somehow this editor is working very slow this is my main file maybe i can use nano editor main.tf and i'm not going to do any changes for now let me do terraform init here yeah indeed it's set and if we put terraform plan for that matter there is no change and i'm using the remote one as you see there is no changes so i can use my code anywhere and if i have the proper credential setup so i'm using the same cloud shell for that account so i do not need to explicitly authenticate again it's already authenticated so there is no change and for example if i do any changes from here and let me make any changes here maybe seven new whatever and if i put terraform plan again 
it is going to destroy the existing one and it will create a new one so one to destroy one to add so why not do a terraform apply an automated way head over to this one buckets yeah existing one is deleted now this new has been created and that's about it and maybe better approach terraform destroy at the end destroy if i spell it right destroy yeah. yes so that's destroyed now so i have not touched my local machine i can do it from anywhere and you'll see the state file will be still there with all the changes latest changes you can download it and you can see in, in your local editor text editor will be fine that's it thanks for watching this video see you in the next video